Hello and welcome everyone to the Docker Business Management and Security at Scale webinar. Your hosts are Peter McKee, head of DevRel at Docker, and myself, Scott Campbell, I head up sales. So first let's uh, go into a bit of an overview of the Docker, Docker user base and Docker ecosystem. Docker is used by millions of developers every day to build, share, and run any app anywhere, on-prem or in the cloud. Stack Overflow's annual developer survey shows that it's the number one most wanted developer tool, number two most loved developer tool, over 13 million active developers on Docker, 7 million applications on Docker Hub, and more than 13 billion image polls per month from the Hub, making it the largest registry on the internet. For those new to Docker, and even for those using Docker for many years, the Docker ecosystem is surprisingly rich. All of these tools, content, and integrations help developers build, share, and run applications at scale. There's a lot of information on this slide, but I'll walk you through it. Docker Desktop is much, much more than a pretty GUI on top of Docker Engine. Docker Desktop is designed to let you build, share, and run containers easily on Mac and Windows. Docker handles the tedious and complex setup so you can focus on writing code. Some of the magic Docker Desktop takes care of for developers includes a secure optimized Linux VM that runs Linux containers and, and or sorry, tools and containers, bundled container tools, including Kubernetes, Docker Compose, BuildKit, and security scanning, Docker Dashboard for visually managing all of your container content, a simple one-click installer for Mac and Windows, and pre-configured best practices and secure def defaults. Docker Hub is a, a service provided by Docker for finding and sharing container images with your team. It has an array of content sources, including community developers, open source projects, and in independent software vendors building and distributing their code in containers. Official images are curated by Docker and include a set of over 140 repositories. They pro provide essential base operating systems, middleware, and databases, such as Ubuntu, Nginx, Node, Alpine Linux, Redis, that all serve as the starting point for the majority of users. Official images exemplify best practices and provide clear documentation to serve as a reference for other image authors. Importantly, we ensure that the security updates are applied in a, in a timely manner. Docker verified publisher images are those that where we formed relationships with the ISVs themselves, ensuring that developers can trust the provenance and security of hundreds of commonly used applications. Docker Hub is also the control plane for your Docker admins, for users, audit trails, security scanning, image sharing, and image restrictions can all be centrally managed. Peter, over to you to chat a little bit more about the ecosystem vendors and who we integrate with and how. Yeah, great. Yeah, so we have a uh, tight integration into uh, a couple of the major cloud providers, so AWS and Azure. So directly in your command line on your desktop, you can point your Docker engine, uh, your CLI into a different context. So you can point it into the cloud, into AWS, and you can run your container workloads directly in AWS using the Docker command line, the tool set that you already know and love using Compose. Same thing is true with Azure and uh, ACI. And then we also have tight integrations with GitHub, Bitbucket for code uh, repositories. So you can uh, listen to webhooks when you're uh, commit new code into your repos, and then you can kick off automated builds that build your images and then push those into Hub. Uh, we also have a tight integration into VS Code, um, so you can work with Docker and the Docker engine right inside of VS Code, run your containers, build your images, uh, manage images on Hub. You can also uh, run your images inside of a dev container and be able to do uh, development and debugging your code right inside of uh, containers. Yeah, back to you, Scott. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Cool. So why is all of this important? Productivity and agility is one of the first bullets on this, this slide here. The speed and simplicity of Docker is really what originally drew in developers to the Docker product, the, the you know container management system and all the various different tools that we offer. They were users of that tool set were simply able to ship more software faster. The fundamental, the, this fundamentally changed the way in which companies could innovate. ING, for example, went from shipping once every nine months to shipping over 1,500 times a year by adoption of Docker and DevOps. 
Capital One was able to use Docker to transform how they use data to empower their data scientists and business decisions. Freedom of choice is critical. Ploy on the, on the cloud, on-premise or hybrid, Linux or Windows, Docker native or third-party tools. It's entirely up to you. Existing or greenfield apps. No other containerization approach can say this. Modernize at your pace, not ours. When it comes to security, the key is secure control of your environment and the ability to audit every step in the process. Docker containers are more secure than other approaches with arguably the smallest footprint for attack vectors out there. So Docker has been around for over 11 years now. And as customers have begun to rely on Docker for major parts of the developer tools and infrastructure, we've increasingly heard two key challenges that, that they're facing. Software supply chain attacks are accelerating. Leaders know that in order to ensure secure applications, it starts with the core building blocks, which Docker Hub supplies, and Docker Business enables you to manage. When developers pull arbitrary public images, it puts the organization at risk. Managing hundreds or thousands of developers at scale presents its own unique challenges. Currently, or without Docker Business, no, there is no visibility or control over access to content. And this is especially top of mind for large companies with many work from home devs causing limited visibility. No centralized place to manage users. No centralized place to configure policies. So listening to our customers and users, we recently launched the business, the, sorry, the Docker business subscription tier to address the needs of sophisticated organizations at scale. Docker Business includes SaaS-based user management, image restrictions and access controls, which I'll cover in the next slide. Coming soon, we'll have SAML-based single sign-on, one of the most popular roadmap items we've heard over the last couple of years for sure. In our short and midterm roadmap, we will offer an array of additional control plane features that include support for local registries, such as Artifactory, along with other public registries, such as ECR visibility into what images are being consumed, versions and security vulnerabilities, and a host of developer productivity features that will continue to delight our users. Docker image access management is the first of many control plane features to be added to our Docker business subscription tier. Image access management allows you to stay more secure by managing which containers images developers can use. It also allows you to gain more control by configuring Docker Hub organizations to only allow limited subsets of images, groups, or namespaces. In our first version, image, image access management allows you to restrict access to only Docker official or Docker verified publisher images. At the end of this part of the presentation, Peter will be doing a demonstration of that feature. As many of you know, we've recently updated our licensing terms for Docker Desktop, previously provided for free. We now require users within commercial organizations with more than 250 employees or more than $10 million in revenue to be under one of our paid subscription tiers. These new terms officially take effect on January 31st. There are several choices when it comes to Docker subscriptions. Our personal tier is free and designed for hobbyists, students, open source developers, and small businesses. This subscription plan offers use of Docker desktop, unlimited public repos, and a limited number of daily polls from Docker Hub. Our pro tier is $5 per month on the annual plan and is designed for individual developers that want a private repo, the ability to use our auto build feature, and vulnerability scanning. Our team tier is $7 per month on the annual plan and is designed for what we call two pizza teams or six to maybe 12 developers. The main feature included here is role-based access control and audit logs. Our business tier starts at $21 per month on the annual plan, and we do offer volume pricing. The primary features in Docker business include centralized management, image access management, and as shared soon, as, as shared, soon we'll have single sign-on and a host of other control plane features. With that, over to you, Peter. Awesome. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, so I want to take a quick moment and look at uh, Docker Desktop versus DIY, so doing it yourself. So Docker, uh, I like to think of Docker Desktop as um, 
an iceberg that's floating in the water. I know, stick with me with my analogy here, but you see, a, uh, you see only the top piece of the ice, but underneath the water line is a huge amount of ice that's infinitely more bigger than the, what is above the surface. And that's a little bit like Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop has some rich features, configuration, and does a lot underneath the hood that a lot of people aren't aware of. So I wanted to just walk through a couple bullet points here. I'm not going to read down all of these, so please feel free to read them, but I want to uh, highlight some key points. So in the cloud native app development tool space, we have integra tightly integrated with the Kubernetes runtime and a K8's load balancer, meaning you can run in K8's inside of the VM, and then locally on your machine, you have a load balancer that that um, manages network, network traffic across the two uh, isolated systems. We also have Docker Compose 2.0 integrated right into the CLI. And then as I spoke about earlier, we have tight integrations with AWS ECS and Azure ACI. And then as Scott mentioned earlier also, we have a little small VM lightweight and secure that Docker manages on either your Mac or Windows where we run the Docker uh, engine inside of it. Uh, that is all managed by desktop, kept up to date. Uh, you have the latest and greatest there. Uh, we also handle all of your security. So we automate the security patches. We actually send, uh, when you update, we only do the Delta. So there's small updates that you can update very quickly using Docker desktop, nice and seamless. Um, we also do uh, image vulnerability scanning. And some of the, really the core features that I talked about uh, briefly at the beginning is this one click installation, configuration, and maintenance updates. So in a DIY situation, uh, if you were building out these full feature sets, uh, that's not the end of the game, right? You have to maintain those, you have to keep them up to date, you have to make sure they're configured across all your different workstations, all your different developers' environments. Um, you have to push updates, you got to make sure all your developers are on the same version, all those things. Um, which are very complicated to do, and Docker does very well. So we have all the dev tools integrated. So the engine, Kubernetes, CLI, build, compose, consistency across your Mac and Windows. So in a heterogeneous environment, some developers are running Mac, some are running Windows. Docker desktop is the same experience. Uh, networking is one of the big key features that desktop does. So mapping between your local um, network on your laptop and then into the Docker VM. It will manage networking across that. So as a user and user using the CLI or the GUI, you don't even know that that's happening. It just works. Same with VPN integration for remote IPs. And then bound bounding, uh, bringing your code inside of a container or volumes, persistent storage across your, the Linux VM and your local host system is hard to do. Docker takes care of that all for you. Um, and then we have some other, uh, we have a great UI where you can manage containers and images and volumes. You could connect to the hub registry. You can see your scanning results. Um, and then we also have multi-architecture support. So those folks who run on an Apple M1, we do some great things behind the scenes. We, we can do some emulation. So if you're using a container uh, that was built for a different silicon, um, we do some emulation where that image can still run and your development process is not stalled while you wait for upstream folks to update their images to, to your architecture. Okay, with that, before we jump into a QA, I want to give a quick demo of image access management. Let me unlock lock my password management here and I'm, nope, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use Captain X. He's the owner. <laughs> He's the owner. Okay, there we go. A little struggle with my uh, password manager. Okay, so now that I'm into Hub, I'm gonna navigate up here into organizations. Under organizations, I have one organization called UAP. Bonus points for anybody who knows what UAP is. But now that we're looking at the organization, we have members underneath here. We have uh, two members. We can also take a look at our teams and our repositories. These repositories live underneath this organization. You can also view activity, who's pulled and pushed, uh, those type of things. And then we have a new setting underneath the settings tab for your org permissions. This is where you'll find uh, image, image access management. As you can see, it's disabled right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable it. If you noticed here on the organization images, all these images will always be accessible to your organization. 
So I'm not able to, to turn this off. So any developer that's part of your part of a member of your uh, organization and then put into a team, they'll have access to all of your uh, repositories that live in this organization. The next two big uh, settings are Docker official images and Docker verified publisher images. Uh, Scott did a good job of describing those two programs, but our official images are some very popular images out there. So I'm, those are the two I'm going to look at first. So right now I have them restricted. And let's jump over. We're going to go into Hub. Let me go into another screen, and I'm going to I'm going to search for Node. So Node's here. It's an official image. You can see by the green icon. So let's click in there, and I'm going to get the command to pull this image down. So I'm just going to copy it there. Jump over into my terminal. My lord. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and copy this command and jump back over to my terminal, paste that in. So I'm going to do a Docker pull node. So that's going to go out to hub and try down, try to pull the official image down to my local machine. And there we go. Access has been, has been denied. It's saying I need to log in. I'm already logged in. Let's double check that. So I'm going to, I'm going to log out and then I'm going to log back in. And I'm using uh, another account that's in this organization. Let me just show you. So you make sure I'm not using, uh, verify that I'm not using a crazy account. So there's uh, this user that I'm using. And they're a member of the sales dev team. Okay. So jump it back in. Let me log in. Okay. We're logged in. Clear the screen. I'm going to go ahead and try and pull again. There we go. Access is denied. That is what we expect. Let's go into the organizations, back in the settings, org permissions, and there we go. It's turned off. Now let's take a look at the verify publisher images. It's also been restricted. So MySQL is one of my favorite databases. Let's click on there, and I'm going to click this checkbox right here, verify publisher. I'm not going to use the enterprise edition. You have to pay for that. So let's use the Circle CI uh, MySQL from Circle CI. And you can see it has the verify publisher icon. And again, here's the pull command. Let me copy that. Jump back over my terminal. Let me clear the screen. Paste the command in. So again, Docker pull pulls down an image from Hub to my local machine. And there we go. I've been denied. So let's go ahead and turn those back on real quick. And then now we can jump back into the command, uh, into the terminal. And I'm going to pull no down. There we go. It's been pulled down. Now you'll see it says already existed. I work a lot in Docker, obviously. I, uh, so that image has been cached. Not accessible, but just cached. Um, and so I was able to pull that down now. And let me pull down the Circle CI MySQL image. And there we go. It's pulling it down. I'm going to go ahead and stop that for, for time's sake. One more thing. Let me, let me um, remove all the images I have locally. We have no images locally. And so I want to show you how when I build an image, the same restrictions apply. So jumping over to uh, my code, I have a little Node.js application. I have a Docker file where I'm going to build uh, an image for my, for my application. And I'm using Node, the base image. OK. And if we come back in here, here's Docker official images. Let's turn that off. And I'm going to turn off verified publisher images also. And again, here's our node. Here's our Docker file using node. Back on the terminal. There's our Docker file. And let's just show it. OK, let's clear that. I'm going to do a Docker build called a widget service. I'm going to build in a local directory. And there we go. I've been denied uh, access to that official image. I cannot use it, so my, field, my uh, build fails. And that's what we expected. Of course, if I came back in here, turned it on and redid a build, everything would be fine. Okay, I'm gonna turn those back on. And there's one more category of images I wanted to talk about called community images. So we talked about organization images. Those are your images that sit underneath your org and uh, developers in your org will always have access to them. Official images and verified published images. These are our, our premier content that we have on Hub. Everything else that is public on Hub is considered a community image. Those images are always restricted when you have access 
uh, image access management enabled. So if I disable it, you could see you can now pull community images, but when it's enabled, they're always restricted and I cannot turn that off. Okay, so those are the new features we have in image access management. Uh, let's jump back over to our presentation. Okay, so uh, thanks everybody for watching and uh, we're gonna take a couple questions. I got a really good question right now from the audience. Does centralized user management include the activation and deactivation of users within the license? Can we do this on our own in some sort of dashboard? So yes. So Scott, you want to you want to jump on that? I know you typed an answer already, but you might be able to handle it more eloquently than me. Let me take myself off mute. Um, yeah, for the the short term, uh, it'll be handled just the way it is done currently in both team and Docker business, which is you know managing them via the admin, uh, or if you're the owner of the Docker org through the admin settings, uh, you can add or remove users. I've included a link there in the answered questions. So we explain that in detail on our documentation. Of course, when Docker business has single sign-on, which should be in a couple of months, uh, then adding and, and removing users dynamically is gonna be much, much easier. Uh, more documentation on that will be available soon. Awesome, thank you. I'm just reading, reading through the questions here. So um, will we will be able to control when users get new updates? I believe so. I, I think that's part of the dashboard. I think we're working on some of the, the actual flow of that. But yes, the idea is you'll be able to manage all your installs, all the users who have access. Um, and then SSO is going to be coming shortly. So you can manage users using SSO. Hopefully that right. answers that. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that'll be part of the being able to control updates, uh, control, you know, more settings on the, at the desktop level will be a part of the control plane features that we're adding over the next couple of months and, you know, ongoing, of course. Um, how would, uh, so another question from Jeff here, how would I be able to tell if users install Docker desktop themselves without getting a license after we sign up for Docker team or business? The short answer is you can't. The, you know, just, the nature of, of end user computing, it's, it's kind of hard to tell unless you've got MDM uh, type solutions deployed on Windows or similar type solution like Jamf on, on Mac OS, it's gonna be difficult to control or, or stop them from doing that. There are plans at some point to be able to restrict what organizations are able to do via IP address. So you should be able to control, you have a few more controls there over the course of time, but in the short term, that's gonna be challenging. Yeah, excellent. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so how about federated users and managing access remotely through a different tool? That's what uh, SAML SSO is going to be. Hopefully that answers your question. Um, do you provide security update to community images? No. So community images are just that. They're part of the community. So they're public, public images on uh, any repo. So if I have a Docker ID, which is Pima key, um, I have public images in there. And so Docker as uh, a company does not manage those, those users manage those themselves. Yeah, I can take, I mean, enforce space restriction on my organization for storing Docker images. Yes, if you're using Docker Hub as a private repo, then we do have role-based access controls where you can control which users have access to, to which repos um, within, within your account. Awesome. This is a this is a great one from anonymous attendee. Uh, can you whitelist community images with the access control? Not not currently, um, but if you would go over to our roadmap, if that's a feature that you're interested in, you can go to um, GitHub.com forward slash Docker forward slash roadmap, um, and you can add a, a request in there, an issue in there, and we could take a look at it. Um, but yeah, that seems like that might be um, an interesting idea to be able to whitelist certain open source community images. I would say if they're open source, we do have an open source program. So uh, if you're a non-commercial open source project, I uh, highly suggest to get involved in our open source project where we can whitelist white your namespace. 
so then those those images will be uh, publicly accessible. Yeah, oh, some also, community images are are a part of the DVP program that uh, that Peter and I described as part of the image restriction uh, management that you've got within Docker Business. You can, you know, of course, toggle on and off whether or not users have uh, can pull only from Docker official images or Docker verified publishers. There are several hundred Docker verified publishers today. Um, that and again, that's where we work directly with the the publisher themselves to ensure that. We understand the provenance of it, uh, of, of those images, and making sure the images are coming directly from the publisher. So you've got a, a better security posture with those images. Um, and those are, again, part of the image restriction access. So you can restrict users to only those. But, um, you know, more and more vendors are, are, including open source, are joining the DVP program. Um, so over the course of time, you'll, uh, you'll be able to enjoy that more. But it's a, it's a really good question. Thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, too, if you would please put your questions into the Q&A section, you should be able to find a Q&A session instead of the chat. It's a little bit easier for us to see them and answer them. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, then we have one, can Docker Swarm be used um, in production and how is it uh, compared to Kubernetes? Um, so Marantis uh, took over the Swarm project. So probably best to reach out to them and, and get answers about Swarm from Marantis. Uh, question from Rajesh, uh, how many images can we keep on our private Docker Hub repository? Is there any restriction? No restriction. You can have as many images in there as you like. Um, there is currently no storage limit. Uh, we do plan on implementing some storage limits, as you can imagine, some of them get a little out of control. Uh, and the you know, millions of, of users we have a Docker Hub, but that probably won't happen for another six or eight months, I would say. Awesome. Also to everybody, I just put the link to our roadmap in the chat. So if you click on that, again, uh, that's our public roadmap. Uh, please get involved if you wanna get involved in the direction of Docker's products. You can jump in there and can have a conversation with our engineers, our product managers. Um, we definitely use that roadmap. So please go in and, and read it, upvote um, features that you're interested in or add features that you don't see there. Just wanted to make sure I dropped the link in there. Great. Um, I'll tackle this one. Where can we find more information on volume pricing? So you should uh, go to our, our pricing page, uh, docker.com slash pricing, fill out the contact sales form, and we'll be able to work with you directly on sharing that volume pricing with you. Awesome. Another, Peter, maybe you can help out with this one. If we purchase uh, business licenses for desktop, whether our customer needs purchase it too after we deploy our applications to our customers. So if I'm understanding that question correctly, if you are distributing Docker desktop to your customers, that is a violation of our license agreement. So you'd have to contact us. We can provide you with a little bit more information. The same pricing page contact sales form, we can give you additional information on you know what that what that looks like. Um, some alternatives uh, for how to uh, potentially you know approach that that use case um, we, with ourselves or maybe even a different vendor. Um, but we can tackle that offline because it, it tends to be a pretty uh, in depth type of conversation. Yeah. So here's another question. I'm not a Docker user, but I do manage the software assets. Do I need to have a Docker subscription to manage subscriptions for the organization? If the organization is over 250 people or uh, has revenue over 10 million, then yes, you will need uh, subscriptions for each desktop that you have uh, installed in your environment. You got the volume pricing. Sorry, folks, just reading through questions here. Yeah, Peter, I think you should probably tackle that last one from, from Lewis. But the, oh, from Lewis, okay. Is there a plan uh, for the option to prevent overwriting of tags in Hub that follow a particular pattern? The some all alias tags like latest or uh, develop could be overwritten, but some ver based uh, Tag names are prevented from being overwritten. Oh, that's a great that's a great feature. I'm not 100% sure if that's on our roadmap yet, but I'll, I'll give you my roadmap uh, speech again. Uh, Lewis, please go put that in the roadmap. 
and we can have a discussion around that. Yeah, it seems um, seems like an interesting feature. Um, I definitely our product team will have more thoughts about that, be able to discuss it a little bit more and get the specific scenarios. But yes, thank you, Lewis. So what subscription do we need to run Docker 1.13 and Docker 1705 on production servers? If you are running the Docker open source engine, then uh, you do not need a subscription. But if you are using Docker desktop um, or using Hub, then you'll need a, you'll need a uh, subscription. Anything to add there, Scott? Nope, that was great, thank you. Um, could you upload the slide deck? Uh, oh, I just lost that question, but can you upload the slide deck offline? Yes, we're gonna post this uh, webinar uh, on our webinars page. And I believe if you're an attendee, then we will send you an email with uh, ways in which to ac access that. Yeah, and in in, we'll send the recording out within, I'll say 48 hours. It's usually quicker than that, but we do send out the recording in an email. If you registered, you'll get that. Now, let me see here. Looks like the questions have slowed down a little bit. You see anything in there we haven't tackled, Peter? I don't think so. I think we've got everything. But um, again, re reach out. And if you're not in our community, please join our community. Um, so you can do go to docker.com forward slash community. That will take you uh, uh, to our community page where you can um, plug into our Slack community, our discourse, and our forums. And, um, and then also get involved in local meetups. So we have local meetups all around the world, very active. Um, you can join a local meetup. That's one of the best ways to get involved with Docker. Um, some are coming back in person. It just depends on where you're at in the world, but a lot of them are still uh, virtual. But yeah, please get plugged into that. Um, and then join our community Slack. Uh, all of our engineers, are in there. Uh, myself is in there. Please feel free to ask questions. Our community is fantastic. Our captains are in there. Community leaders um, can help get some questions answered for you. But please reach out. Um, reach out to me. Send me a direct message on Slack if you want. Um, it's a little hard to help troubleshoot, you know, specific issues you're having in your specific environment. But I can do my best, and I can get you pointed in the right direction. But yeah, I think that's. I think we're at the end, Scott. Thank you so yeah. much. I appreciate it. Anything to, to add? No, thank you very much for attending. Uh, please, if you have additional questions, especially on the sales side, uh, don't hesitate to reach us on that contact sales form. On the, the pricing page, uh, you know, of course, uh, we've got various different vehicles for getting answers to other questions, our Slack community, our support forum, those sorts of things. So please don't hesitate to reach out and we're looking forward to working with you. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye.